Hey there, this is video number two of intermediate music theory. I know I'm holding guitar, but it's good to remember that even if you're learning this for guitar, this stuff all, all of it works on all instruments. You could take all this stuff and play it on a piano. It's If it makes notes, this stuff all applies. Now, are all instruments harmony instruments like guitars and pianos? No they're actually easier because then you just got to worry about melodies, scales, kind of that stuff. Whereas we're getting into like full blown chords and that, that I think is a lot more complicated, you know, like you make all these shapes, like on a piano, you know, these, you can go all the way up to 11, some crazy stuff. So today though, we're going to cover another secondary chord just like last time only instead of the dominant we're gonna throw in the seven chord which is a diminished chord um a lot of music nowadays especially like uh you know i'm really into like shred guitar and stuff there there's a ton of diminished scale work going on and diminished arpeggios and stuff like that we're gonna cover a little bit today how some of that works why it makes sense and what you're creating by using these but we're going to do the secondary diminished chord because we're already assuming because we're at the intermediate stage that you know what the seven chord in any other key does. Okay. But real quick, we'll cover it anyway. Seven chord. I'm just making a little cheater one. Resolves up to the one chord and you could whatever you want to do. Okay. It's a secondary one. Well, a secondary seven diminished chord is just you're doing a seven of your target chord. So if your target, like we started out in the last video with the dominance, if your target is the three chord, it's seven of three. What does that mean? That means briefly, briefly, this is your chord, it's your three chord, but briefly you're going to think about it as though it's one. Well, that means seven would be right there. I'm gonna use some little like uh, more jazzy chords for this one. It just works better for these diminished. I feel like when you land on like cowboy chords and stuff, it just doesn't make any sense. So the one chord is here. Three chord is there. Still a nice, nice little thing. But now. This stuff is very strange the first time you hear it, the first time you do anything with it. I think this stuff sounds really cool and I really, really dig like thinking about where these things land and how they work, but it's very strange at first. So just again, you know, whatever your target chord is, whether it, you, let's say you're gonna go from the one chord to the four chord, which is pretty standard. It's pretty standard chord progression. Of that four, you're gonna give it a seven. Right? Let's try that. Now I'm not real good at this bar for whatever reason, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna give it a go. You know, it's you deserve to hear it since you're listening to me talk about it. So one chord. Seven of four to four. Let's try it again. Hopefully I can do better. Well, let's let's color the chord. Oh yeah, it's better. Now think of that as seven of one because it's seven of the key you're already in but this one is seven of four every 
every chord in your key that you're using has its own seven. You could even do seven of seven. It'd be a little ridiculous. <laughs> We're gonna try. Let's try it. Okay, we're gonna go one, seven of seven, seven, one. Way unnecessary. Somebody might really like that. That's fine. <laughs> but you can do it. It's it's your choice. You can you can do seven up. Seven of seven, seven of four, seven of three, whatever you want. And actually this can get you some real cool uh, chromatic lines. Because now you can go one, seven of two, two, seven of three, three, seven of four, four. Now that's weird because the root for seven of four doesn't move. So you've got... It's pretty cool. It's really cool stuff. There's really strange tonalities, things that you'd start hearing in jazz or even maybe like some post-romantic music. And then when you're trying to play improv over it of any kind, it gets real like, whoa, Jesus. You know, they really start coming at you. But let's 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 give it a go. pretty cool they're fun um and and all you gotta do especially for guitarists right there's i don't want to get too carried away on like the different shapes i use this one it's pretty simple uh let's uh just take it here i'll show it to you it's actually only three notes that i'm using it's a fully diminished which technically does not happen in a major key it's a uh, minor key thing nobody's at this point I would hope nobody's getting real picky but I mean if you are this is the diminished chord that works in in major keys basically you're taking your A minor shape right those three notes there as are and then just below them on the low string Put your middle finger or my other one okay so i should probably explain what frets those are on <laughs> getting carried away i'm sorry guys okay so we'll go from the seventh fret middle finger on the seventh fret of the e string skip the a we're not going to hit the a at all go to the d string we're going to do the sixth fret and then on the g string we're going to do the seventh it'll stand out okay now the that's called full diminished because in order to get that note it's stacked minor third minor third minor third and by now hopefully we've discussed this in more of a beginner theory video i haven't done all of them you know like i'm not doing everything in a row i'm kind of doing everything in blocks so that people can you know, if, if I'm covering something that's too beginner for you, you've got something to move on to. So the other shape we're going to cover for that is this one. And this does occur naturally in a major key. You know, if, if you're in G major, my favorite key. It's right there. No notes out of the key there. That's exactly how it is. So that would be... 7th fret of the 6th string I use my middle finger and then skip A again we're not going to hit it at all D and G we're going to do on the 7th D and G 7th B string 6th no high E string no A string okay seven of now this the other thing i want to point out and you know i mentioned the shred guitars that use a lot of diminished arpeggios and stuff and this is the same with that dominant chord we covered in the last video 
it works in arpeggios too, right? So if you're doing a minor arpeggio and you want to grab its seven, okay? And again, the root, just a half step below your last root and then make that diminished, diminished arpeggio shape. So these things, you know, work the same way. Or like, uh, like I said in that last video, we covered dominant. That's a dominant arpeggio. Now the problem with dominant is you have to resolve up quite a ways from it. Now you, there's inversions and things. We're not going to get into that in this video, but <clears throat> so you take your dominant here up to this guy in arpeggio form. It's the same as like we talked about in chords now. are what really matter with this stuff but so the dominant of and the seven of these are our first uh, secondary chords and borrowed chords and we're kind of delving into the like you're in a key but you're not in a key that's kind of where we're going right now um, so yeah intermediate music theory video part two the seven the diminished chord of the one and a half step up from it. Have a good day. You're going to do awesome.